Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at the formula for the entries in Pascal's triangle. I'll give you a bit of an introduction to it if you haven't seen it before in the factorial notation. Um, if you have seen this before, you might want to jump forward straight away uh, to the point where we start proving uh, this, that this relationship really holds in general. It's a slightly um, complex uh, proof to prove that it is the case that when you add two numbers in Pascal's triangle together, you get the one uh, below it in the right place using that formula. So I hope that's useful uh, and interesting. Do let me know uh, in the comments below if you've got any questions. Please like and subscribe and check out the uh, website and the Amazon store and I will get on with the explanation. So you can compute the numbers in Pascal's triangle using uh, this formula that n choose r, sometimes also written as uh, a column n r like this, uh, and this is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial, where as usual we've got this notation for the factorial. n factorial just means multiply all the numbers together, uh, 1 times 2 times 3, and stop when we get to n. Okay, and these give us the numbers in Pascal's triangle. So for example, if I do 4 choose 1, um, then this would be 4 factorial over 1 factorial times 4 minus 1 factorial, which is 4 factorial over 1 factorial times 3 factorial. And notice how the numbers on the bottom here always add up to give the number on the top. That's always going to be true. Um, and so this is just 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 over 1 times 2 times 3 times another 1 if you like. So we don't even need to do any multiplying here, we just get some cancellation and we get 4, right? And if I look at Pascal's triangle, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, we do see that there is a 4 exactly here and this is the one uh, that we found. Now there's a slightly unusual naming convention in Pascal's triangle that the first row here we think of as the zeroth row and then this one is the first row, this one's the second, this is the third, and this is the fourth. And similarly, we think of the one here as the zeroth entry, and then the four uh, as the first entry. Okay, so we get that this n choose r is the rth entry in the nth row of Pascal's triangle. But we just have to remember that strange convention that we start, uh, always start counting here at zero. Okay, um, so uh, let's see if we can find another one like this. So let's go for the next row here, which is the uh, the fifth row. Okay, and let's say I wanted to work out this 10. Okay, well that would be the second entry in that row because it's uh, got a, um, this is the zero, this is the first, this is the second. Okay, so I've got five choose two, that would be five factorial over, um, let me write it as I've written it up here, 2 factorial times 5 minus 2 factorial, so that's 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So here again I've got 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 over 1 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 3, and uh, I can do a lot of uh, cancelling of terms here, uh, and I've just got 4 times 5 over 2, 20 over 2, which is 10 exactly as we expect. Okay. Um, notice we've also got this symmetry in Pascal's triangle. So if I worked out 5 choose 3 instead, right, that would be 5 factorial over 3 factorial 2 factorial, which is exactly the same as 5 choose 2. Now you might be aware that this notation when I say choose comes from this coefficient also being the number of ways of choosing uh, two objects from a selection of five different objects. And of course, the number of, way of choose, number of ways of choosing two objects out of a selection of five is the same as the number of, way of ways of choosing three out of a selection of five, because if I choose two objects, I necessarily leave out three. So it's exactly the same problem to say which ones am I choosing or which ones am I leaving out. So we get that symmetry. Okay, now um, I've given you this formula and said, okay, look, it looks like it corresponds to the numbers in Pascal's triangle here. Um, I wonder if we can go one step better than that and prove that this formula really does continue to work all the way through Pascal's triangle. Okay, so you remember the kind of def definitional rule of Pascal's triangle is that to get, you know, say this 10, I take the 4 and the 6 and add them together. Right, so in general, 
what this is saying is that if I have n choose r, right, so I've got the rth entry in the nth row of Pascal's triangle, and I add it to the r plus first entry in the same row, okay, I should get from the n plus one row, the n plus first row, again, so here it was the second and the third entries, I get the third entry, okay, so I get the r plus one entry. So if I can prove that this is true for all uh, the possible values here, obviously, you know, r can only go up to n and you know, have to be positive whole numbers, but if I can prove that this is true, then I can really justify that that formula um, is a sensible one. Okay, so um, so what we're going to do now uh, is prove that. Okay, and to do that, it's a little bit, the algebra is a little bit uh, uh, involved, but it's quite easy to follow, really. Um, so I hope you'll stay with me for that. So the um, Let's just write down the left-hand side here from the definition, right? So n choose r plus n choose r plus 1, that would be n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. And n choose r plus 1 would be n factorial over r plus 1 factorial times n minus r plus 1 factorial. Okay, so... Um, Now, when you see a complicated object like this, it can be easy to to, to uh, sort of back away from it. But what we have to try and do is just do the ordinary sorts of things we do with this type of object. So I've got two fractions, and I want to ultimately get something that's just a single fraction. So we know to add fractions together, we try to put them over a common denominator. Okay, so let me just write these out uh, a little bit more fully, right? So this one is n factorial, and then r factorial is 1 times 2 all the way up to r, okay, and then n minus one, n minus r factorial, I just do one times two, uh, and this time I stop at uh, n minus r, okay. So that's that's the first one, and then the other one is n factorial over one times two, and I go all the way up to r plus one, and then for the for the uh, n minus r plus one factorial, I do one times two and I stop at uh, n minus r plus 1 factorial, all right? So, the, sorry, just at n minus r plus 1. Uh, so the thing to, to notice here is that, you know, n minus r plus 1 is just 1 lower than uh, n minus r, right? So if I put in an extra term into, uh, you know, in, into here, right? It would, let's see if I can squeeze that in. I'd have 1 times 2. The one before this is n minus r plus 1, right? So to put them over a common denominator, actually uh, what I have to do here is multiply this one top and bottom by uh, n minus r, and then these terms will be the same. And on the left-hand one, uh, this one goes up to r plus 1, this one only goes up to r, so if I multiply it top and bottom by r plus 1, then they'll both be r plus 1 factorial, okay? So what I get here is n factorial times r plus 1 divided by r plus 1 factorial times um, n minus r factorial. And then here I've got n factorial times n minus r over the same thing. So I've put them over a common denominator, which means I can just uh, add them together now. right? And we've got uh, n factorial in common on the top here, so we can factorize that, so that's r plus 1 plus n minus r, on the bottom I'll leave that as r plus 1 factorial n minus r factorial, and here we see uh, we've got an r minus r cancelling out, so I've just got n factorial times n plus 1, and that's just n plus 1 factorial, okay? So I've got n plus 1 factorial over r plus 1 factorial times n minus r factorial. Now we just think, well, what did we, um, what did we want this to be? We wanted it to be uh, n plus one choose r plus one. Okay. So uh, now, if we write that down, n plus one choose r plus one, that would be n plus one factorial, looking good so far, and then I'd have r plus one factorial, and then this term here. If it doesn't quite look right, just hold on, because I need to do n minus n minus r, but for n plus one and r plus one, right? So I do n plus one 
minus r plus 1 factorial. Oh, but look, the 1s cancel here, so this is just uh, this is just uh, m plus 1 factorial over r plus 1 factorial times m minus r factorial. And in fact, this thing here is just m plus 1. Choose r plus 1 then. And we've proven that the uh, sum of the uh, two entries in Pascal's triangle will always add together to give the one below it here calculated in the same way. So we can be confident that this n choose r formula is going to continue to work even for very large values of n and for r.